Welcome to another edition of Around with Randall, your weekly podcast on making your nonprofit more effective for your community. And here is your host, the CEO and founder of Hallett Philanthropy, Randall Hallett. Thanks again for joining me, Randall, on Around with Randall. Today's podcast, discussion, conversation, actually has been developing over the last couple of months as I have run into as a consultant, some interesting situations that lead to the conversation, the thought process of how close is too close to a prospect or a donor. Number of scenarios, interestingly enough, have kind of been brought to the surface where gift officers uh, fundraisers have gotten awfully close to their donors. And for the most part, we find that that's what we want, isn't it? I mean, isn't that what we want is our gift officers and organization to be very close to our most loyal supporters. Interestingly enough, there's a line there. A couple of examples that I've run into recently. Uh, I, I've been made aware that a, Gift officer uh, is utilizing a donor's home or homes uh, for personal and family vacations. That gets awfully close. Now, I have certainly stayed in donors' homes. Many times, very fortunate that when I would travel, when I was representing organizations as a practitioner, that I would stay in a spare bedroom of someone's home. And they understood that I'd be coming and going and that I might have an extra meal or two with them, but that my role was to be hoteled there so that I could get out and see people. So that's not what I'm talking about, that uh, maybe this individual has become so close that they're utilizing multiple vacation homes as family vacation spots without the donor being there. Uh, I have another uh, situation that has arisen recently where it appears like the gift officer is literally planning family uh, activities, family engagement. I have certainly been a part of and attended a myriad of birthday parties and funerals and other things that donors were very generously inviting me to, including my wife many times. But I wasn't planning them. I wasn't seen as part of the family. I used to have someone who uh, I worked with who was so close to the uh, donor that there was a fear in my mind that upon uh, passing, uh, and I have no idea if anything happened from it, that the gift officer might be, they were so close, left in this donor's estate, and there was so much money present that would be a really bad situation. All of these things lead to the question of how close should we be? And I have told millions of stories. That's a little bit of a figurative number, but a lot of stories about where there were times I knew more about the financial uh, implications, the financial engagement, the financial decisions of the donor more so than some of the kids sometimes. And I can think of one scenario where I literally had to have a very hard conversation where there was a very large, very large estate gift coming and he had not notified his kids. And I said, John, you got to do this. You got to tell your kids because it's going to put us all in a bad situation. But I've been to those personal events. I've been to those engagements. I've stayed at people's homes. And yet what we find is, is that there is a line AFP many years ago and other associations like AHP and others have adopted it, but this idea of the donor bill of rights and in it are things that the donor should be able to expect in the relationship from the tactical, like who's asking them, are they a volunteer or a employee to that they're assured the gifts are going to be used correctly, that they're going to be communicated, that they can be pulled off. But one thing that comes out is, is that, I think it's number seven is, is that there's the language of it states that they can be assured there that the expectations and the relationships are represented in the best interest of the donor. I agree with that hundred percent, but what about the best interests of the organization? 
So if you think maybe you're too close or you work with someone who is too close or supervising, the tactical pieces of the conversation today is what can you do about it? How do you handle this situation? Because what's happening is, is that the donor may not be being misrepresented in any way, shape or form, but you're not maximizing the opportunity. And all of a sudden, if you get too close, it gets hard to ask. I mean, I think about like my parents as an example. I would really struggle with asking my mom and dad for a major gift for an organization that I represent. They're too close. I know too much. There's competing interests. There's other people involved, like my sisters and how that might affect them. I can't do that. So where is this line that lets people get close but doesn't compromise the needs of the organization to actually fundraise? So first and foremost, communication is always a winner, is having a very hard conversation with someone. If it's a subordinate and that's your role as their boss, as their manager, as their leader, It's saying something like, I watch you. You do such a great job. You've built such a fantastic relationship with them. To be candid, I'm a little concerned how close you've gotten to them. And I want to make sure that you're not compromising yourself or the donor or the organization. I'd like to talk about that. To get that close particularly as a gift officer, that means that that gift officer is doing all the things they should. They just did a little bit too much of it. You need to have that conversation. Supervisor, that's what it sounds like. Maybe it's a peer. Gosh, you're awfully close to them. Are you sure you're okay with where the line is here? Maybe it's a colleague that can help them see the light. If you are vested inside that family, almost seen as a member of that family or involved in that family. I have another situation that I've realized that I have a a, a gift officer that I, I know who is literally inviting this donor to their house for all the holidays. And again, part of that's not bad. But if you're seen more as a family member than you are as a representative of the organization, that creates confusion. It messes with the clear lines of what we need to have. So the first part is have a conversation. The second part is, particularly if you're in this situation often, is realizing that you have a job to do. And I, I can think of one scenario where in, in my past where I had someone who literally was so close to everybody. They were it was a smaller community. They were working with a lot of people and they were so ingrained in the conversations, in the in the relationships, in the lives of these individuals. It got to the point this individual couldn't ask any of them, which made her highly ineffective. It wasn't she didn't believe in the mission. mission. It wasn't that she was a bad person. She just got too close to too many people. You may have heard and seen studies and conversations about leaders not staying too long. And that's an example of it where you have a 20 year career and all of a sudden you're too close to people, particularly in a small organization, particularly in a smaller community where those things can be more natural. Realizing that it's a job is really important. Realizing who you represent is critically important. I had, an, I had an interesting situation where a donor handed me uh, some information and said, if I get called to the ED, I want them to call you first. And I had to tell this donor, no. The first person is going to be called is 911. Or the first entity is 911. Then we're going to call your, then they're going to call your family. And if you want me to come and visit, I'm glad to. But I'm not in that role in the middle. He was a little offended by that, to be candid. And I had to have a a good conversation with him to say, my role is certainly to shepherd you through whatever you need in terms of medical information. I was uh, representing a hospital, a medical center. But it's not just to get in between or be in the decision-making tree of your medical care. 
There are medical professionals and family members who should be a part of that. And eventually we came to an understanding and he kind of agreed, but it was an interesting situation. That was too close. I have a job to do. My job was to ask him for money. My ethics required me to represent my institution and not get too close to him to compromise the relationship, but yet at the same time, be close enough where he felt comfortable when we talked in our relationship and what I was representing. It's a hard line. If you find yourself in that situation and maybe, you know, the, the, the cars left the garage, so to speak, it's too late. Ask for help. I can't tell you how many times I've been asked to be involved with fundraising activities here, particularly here in Omaha. And they're like, well, we know, you know, so-and-so. And I'm like, yeah, that's a relationship. I can't, I can't bring you. I can't bring you into, I can say it's a great idea, whatever it is that we're, we're looking to do. I can tell, tell, tell the individual or individuals, I think it's great and I'm for it, but I can't be in the room when this happens. And in some ways I'm asking for help. You need to get to them in a different way. And so if you have this relationship, maybe you need to bring in another gift officer and you sit down and you say with that particular prospect or donor, you and I have developed such a deep uh, relationship based on trust and affection and which I value so much. And it, it, it jades my ability to be neutral, to represent the organization. And I, want to bring someone else in. I'm still going to be your friend and I'm still going to be here, but they're going to represent the institution and their interests. And I will be silent or, or on the back burner of those conversations. If that's already happened and I've seen this happen, you bring in another person into the equation. If you're a small shop, maybe it's a board member, maybe it's the CEO or an executive director or someone else in the office. If it's a larger shop, then that's a lot easier because you have other gift officers. The trouble comes is most people don't want to do that. They don't think they've done anything wrong. Or maybe more importantly, they think of themselves in a negative way. If that were to come up saying, well, I did something wrong. No, actually, some of the best fundraisers I've ever been around have been able to say, I've gotten too close. We need to bring in someone else to manage the relationship from the institutional perspective. That's not a bad thing. That actually is a sign of being an adult and being a professional and treating the organization with respect it deserves because it's your paycheck and the mission that you believe in. And it also treats the donor prospect at the highest possible level. You're putting their interests first, which is what we should always aim to do. It's a hard conversation to have with someone. I can't... emphatically enough indicate that the damage done if something happens to reputation, to the organization, to credibility, if you don't keep the proper perspective is really, it's sizable to be candid. It also can compromise the financial integrity of the institution or at least the fundraising efforts. I am aware of uh, some situations where there's people fairly close to their donors and they're getting gifts. And the question I have figured out to ask that I can't get an answer to is, are they getting the size of gifts that the organization deserves, needs? Are they being asked for the right dollar amount? Because they're so close to the donor that it's easy to ask for, well, here's 20, could you do 2,500 when we should be asking for 250,000? And what that does is it's lost opportunity. It's not maximizing the philanthropic opportunity the organization needs with that particular donor. That can have financial ramifications, particularly if you're planning on that gift. And maybe there's a small committee and you're like, well, I know, you know, Betty, can you talk to Betty? And you say, sure. And then, you know, I can't talk to Betty the way I need to, or we, the organization have the conversation with Betty the way it needs to, because I'm too close. Bring in someone else. I don't believe anybody I've ever worked with either as their boss, as a supervisor or in consulting is doing anything that they have planned or that they're trying to take advantage of someone. I, I, I I value the people that have these challenges too much on a personal level to ever think that. But in the end, I'm not sure it makes much of a difference. You get too close or someone gets too close. The end result is the organization is not being represented correctly. The donor probably is being, or the prospects being 
challenge to try to figure out where the lines are, which is really not donor centered, donor intent. And professionally, you're compromising your reputation if you're the person involved. And to be candid, that's though well, that's three bad ones, and that's three strikes, and that means you're probably out. And I would highly recommend that we work as an industry and work individually not to allow these things to happen. Be a good friend, be a good listener, put their interests first, be there for them when they need you, go out of your way to help them. All things I believe in and have executed. But when you become closer and you get to be seen almost like a family member and you're doing things that are really bordering on personal support, you got to be careful. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself in trouble. Don't forget to check out the blogs, halletphilanthropy.com, two or three per week going up. And if you're interested in communicating with me, you you disagree with this or anything else I've said, or you have an idea for a a particular show or a podcast, that's podcast at halletphilanthropy.com. Comes right to me. Remember, building relationships is about, in the essence of doing what, is what the work that we love, and that's helping others. And we are conduits for people, who, particularly those with larger resources, that want to make a difference for other people, which brings me to my all-time favorite saying. Some people make things happen. Some people watch things happen. Then there are those who wondered what happened. And our work, we are the facilitators being people who make things happen, partnering and helping people who want to make things happen for people who are wondering and the causes that we believe in and our community needs, wondering what happened. And I hope that you can sense every day you walk into the office, a meeting, one-on-one, whatever, conversation, you feel like you're making a difference because you are. Nonprofit work is the work of the angels because we're helping and, and trying to make our communities better places. And that's what nonprofit work, philanthropy should be all about. Love of mankind. And relationships play a particularly important part in that equation. Can't thank you enough for joining me again on this edition of Around with Randall. We'll see you next time. Don't forget, make it a great day. (music) 